redeemer of all mankind, holy and pure, perfect and righteous, blessed hope, blessed Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome joining me our channel again this morning. And uh, I want to start with a short series, which is basically going to be a line upon line interpretation of Psalm 103. And I want to take a moment during the next couple of sessions to share with you some of my thoughts on Psalm 103 and what it is that the Lord has stirred in my heart as I was meditating upon this scripture. During the month of June, I had a breakaway for a few days visiting the Sonavata Dam in Kalinan and uh, just spending a couple of days fishing and just also teaching and training people how to fish. And it was an, during the first night that I was sleeping at the dam that the Lord woke me up at about eight minutes past 12 in the evening. And he spoke into my heart just the words Psalm 103. I, of course, got up and I read the Psalm on my cell phone application and it just dawned on me how rich this song is and that is why I then begin to meditate upon this song during my time there and also after I came back home I continued to meditate upon this and this is some of the thoughts that I'm going to share with you in the next couple of installments. Now what I'm sharing with you basically in this psalm is a lot about the impressions and the input that the Lord placed upon my heart that I received during this time of meditation. Now, the very first thing that truly touched my heart was the absolute dimension of intimacy between David and the Lord in this psalm. As you read and meditate upon it, you will see that there is utter transparency between David and the Lord as to what it is that is in his, in his heart. I'm going to present this to you verse by verse and in that way kind of do a line upon line interpretation of this of the scripture. So let's start off with this one of Psalm 103. It says, the Psalm of David, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. As you look at this, you see that David engaged the Lord with his whole heart, with his whole life, and with his complete innermost being. And we see that he continues to bow in wonder and in love before the Lord as the one and true, only, holy God. And as I was meditating upon this, I just again realized how we as the church, to a large extent, has become blasé in our encounters with the Lord. We have lost so much of the reverential fear and honor towards the Lord in our day-to-day -day walk with God. We so often find ourselves that we have shifted from this dimension of intimacy to a place of having come to a place of function and religiosity. If you continue to dwell on this, you see that it speaks to the very condition of our hearts. When David makes this statement, bless the Lord, O my soul, he is referring to his better part, his soul dimension, which of course immediately comes from God and also will return to God, which is immaterial, 
and it's immortal and it's of more worth than anything in this world. You see, we need to understand that God must be served with the best that we have, with the best of our substance, and therefore also with the best of our persons. And it is the heart, or if you want to call it that, the soul, which God requires that we must give unto Him. The service, as it is rendered within the soul or the spirit, is very much agreeable to God. We have to remember that God is a spirit and therefore must be worshipped in spirit and in truth. And unless the spirit or the soul of a man is engaged in the service of God, it is of little benefit. For bodily exercise profits not, preaching, hearing, praying and praising, Praising should be both, not only with the soul and with the understanding, but also with the spirit. And when we see here, when David comes before the Lord, he calls upon his soul to bless the Lord, not by invoking or conferring a blessing on God, because in any case, you and I as a man, it's impossible for us to all a blessing upon the Lord because God is sovereign and he has no need of it because he is God and he is all sufficient and he is blessed forevermore but here we see David now blesses the Lord by proclaiming and congratulating his blessedness and by giving God thanks for all the mercies, both spiritual and temporal, with everything and all that is within him, he blessed his holy name. This means that David is blessing the Lord, not only with all that is within his body, which includes his heart, his veins, his lungs, his organs, everything, but also with everything that is within his soul. If we look at this, we must understand that it speaks of all the powers and the faculties of David's soul, his understanding, his will, his affections, his judgment, and all the grace that was formed in him through faith, hope, love, joy, and every other aspect. And all of these he now employs in praising the name of the Lord, which is exalted above all blessing and praise, and who is great and glorious in all of the earth. If you look at Psalm 97 verse 12, it says, Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to the remembrance of His holy name. It's basically an instruction for us that we need to rejoice in the Lord that we need to give thanks as we remember him. Then if we come to the second verse, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Now, this portion of bless the Lord, O my soul, is actually a repeat of that portion in verse 1. And the fact that it's repeated show us the importance of this service. It places an emphasis and it emphasizes the intense desire of David that his soul should be engaged in the blessing of the Lord God. Then we see David actually instructs his soul not to forget all the benefits of God. Not even one of them. We need to come to that understanding, guys, that even the least of the benefits that we receive are not to be forgotten. And we need to understand that as men, we are altogether unworthy of these benefits. 
and they do not flow to us because we have merit to receive them, but because of the very mercy of God. These benefits that he bestows upon us are many. It's even innumerable. And the Bible teaches us that they are new every morning and that they continue all of the day. Just think for a moment how great the sum of all of these blessings and mercies must be. And then the word instructs us that we should not forget one of them. And yet we find that even as we look at ourselves and we think that we are a good person, we are very quick to forget the goodness of the Lord. Just like the Israelites of old, when the one moment would sing the praises of God and soon thereafter forget all his words. You see, the Lord knowing the weakness of his people's memories has not only under the gospel dispensation appointed an ordinance to be continued to the end of the world to commemorate this principal blessing and benefit of his redemption by his son, but has also promised his spirit to bring all things to their remembrance. And this they should be concerned for, that they do remember what God has done for them, in order both to show gratitude and thankfulness to Him, and for the encouragement of their faith and hope in Him. Guys, if you look at this, you realize that is another reason why we need to celebrate the table of the Lord, on a daily basis. I want to bring this down to a practical level as I conclude. And I want to encourage you to say, take a moment at the end of this message and think on all of the good things that the Lord has done for you. I want to Encourage you to be practical. Sit down, take a pen and paper, or if you're in front of your computer or your cell phone, whatever you use to make notes, make a list of these good things, and then begin to thank and praise the Lord for what He has done for you with your whole thing, with your whole being, body, soul, and spirit. And then once you have done that, I encourage you to take a moment and come to the table of the Lord, and at the table of the Lord, remember what He has done for us. I want to conclude by saying to you, grace and peace to you as you partake of the table, and also encourage you, take some time now, in this moment, and just worship and praise the Lord for all that he has done. I pray that as you meditate upon this word that I released to you today, you will be greatly blessed and that you will have a face-to-face -face encounter of a deep intimacy with the Lord. Grace and peace to you. And great grace to you and to your family as you revisit this message and as you meditate upon this time with the Lord. God bless you. All mankind, holy and pure, perfect and righteous, blessed hope, blessed Redeemer, our faith fulfilled. We have come to bow our lives before you. We've come with our shoes off. Not in our strength, but with fear and trembling, approaching your holiness and your mighty presence.